Now, front of the mail this morning, a stake in the heart of Middle England. There's a warning that the cost of the controversial HS2 rail scheme, which will be built through Warwickshire, will double from its predicted £40 billion to £80 billion. The projection comes from the Institute of Economic Affairs, a right-leaning free market think tank. It says that HS2 would provide a high-speed rail link from London to Birmingham and the north of England, and that that should be cancelled. Dr Richard Wellings is from the Institute of Economic Affairs and wrote the report. Good morning. Good morning. So the government's got its sums wrong, has it? Uh, well, we have identified um, several risks that could put up the cost to taxpayers. And the first of those is that um, as the election approaches, and particularly if it's looking close, uh, the government could be tempted to, if you like, buy off opposition by putting more of the route uh, in tunnels, possibly diverting it in certain locations as well. And that clearly would raise, um, potentially raise the cost. Another problem is... Um, uh, the uh, new infrastructure needed to link into the high-speed two stations and you know, tram lines, new railways and so on. Uh, it would also have an impact on the road network and, and there there are potentially um, tens of billions of extra costs. And finally, um, there's the um, regeneration grants that the government will give around the uh, high-speed two stations. And these are most of these are brownfield sites. So these are typically very expensive to reclaim and to, to move existing businesses off and you know, to replace them with, with, with new stuff. So there are clearly you know, massive risks here for the taxpayer. It does sound like conjecture, though, rather than uh, concrete evidence. Uh, well, you know, the report's coming out tomorrow and you'll see there, that, you know, we've, we've actually listed um, various schemes that the uh, local authorities and the transport uh, bureaucracies across the country are, are planning to link into HS2. And I was actually uh, surprised at how many there are and, you know, the cost could be astronomical, um, particularly in London, but also across the country, you know, tr- new tram schemes, for example, to link, to link Derby to the new station at, uh, at Toton and so on. That's just one example, but it will have obviously have big implications for the transport infrastructure around the stations and uh, that hasn't really been properly factored in yet. I was talking to Pete Waterman a few weeks back uh, on the station. He's joined the government's task force for this and he says you can't stand in the way of progress. However uh, damaging the route is, it's going to bring massive economic benefits. Uh, well, I mean, numerous uh, independent commentators have, have criticised the uh, business case for high speed too, and it, it is well known now it's based on a series of flawed assumptions. For example, that business travellers can't work on the train. Um, it, it, it uses very optimistic passenger projections. It neglects the potential impact of competition from the existing West Coast mainline and other routes. And, and there's all, all, all also the risk of um, technological change um, improved IT that will reduce the need for face-to-face meetings and so on. So it is a hugely risky project. And I mean, the main point we're making in the report is if this money was spent on different transport schemes, the returns could be a lot safer and an awful lot higher. But what you can't dispute is it will provide a much quicker route into uh, our capital city, which is where big business is. Well, um, I mean, much quicker is uh, debatable. For example, you know, in Birmingham, uh, a lot of travellers will come into New Street and then they'll have to transfer to the new station at Curzon Street that could be a, a 15 minute walk or at least it's going to be very inconvenient to change trains there because you know it's not not at the same station the same is true in Leeds and you know, for people who are coming f- not from town centres but from the suburbs it, you know the door-to-door time savings aren't going to be that great so it's important to remember that. Is it the route that's wrong or the principle? Um, well, I, I think the route is wrong, but I mean, it's about basic economics and this isn't commercially viable. You know, the, the, the costs will it, it almost certainly exceed the benefits. Um, private investors wouldn't touch it with a barge pole, so it's having to be funded by taxpayers. So, it, you know, it's fundamentally an, an economic scheme and, you know, it's plenty of independent economists have come to the same conclusion. If we don't have high speed two, the rail routes that are already there, which link London, the Midlands and the North, are going to be over capacity. It's just going to be too much of a burden. So if we don't go ahead with HS2, what do you do? Uh, Well, I mean, that's a bit of a myth as well. There there is a potential problem of Milton Keynes and south of there with the heavy commuter traffic. But that can be solved relatively cheaply by increasing capacity on the existing line, and that's been proven by various studies. Uh, Further north, it's not a massive problem. You're going to see a lot of the um, coal traffic disappear uh, because of changes in the energy market, so there will will be spare capacity there further north. So, I mean, uh, this can all be sorted out without spending tens of billions. But can it provide the huge economic boost which the government says HS2 will? 
Yes, I mean, the, the economic boost from alternative transport schemes will be enormously higher because, um, you know, the, the benefits from HS2 are so small relative to the costs. I mean, even if you accept the government's own figures on that, it would still be better to spend the money elsewhere on different transport schemes. And these would often be, be local bog standard schemes like bypasses and so on. But there does need to be improved rail links because uh, look at the environmental costs and we want to get traffic off the roads, don't we? Well, I mean, if you you know if you're in- interested in in the environment, then high speed rail is the last thing you'd invest in because it, it uses, uses huge amounts of huge huge amounts of energy, and um, even if that energy is um, generated with you know wind power or nuclear, it's going to displace the uh, the users of that green energy onto the gas and coal. So it's not good for the environment. And rail as a whole isn't that great either. It, it can be efficient with busy commuter services, but a lot of the other trains, you know, off-peak times and in more rural areas are running around empty and actually using more energy than cars. Isn't it better than being sat on the M6 or the M25? Well, I mean, it depends on your own um, personal circumstances, but um, rail's often very in- inconvenient for a lot of journeys because it's, it's effectively a three-stage journey. So you have to get to the station from where you live at one end, and then at the other end you have to get from the station to wherever you're going to, you know, place of work. Whereas, you know, obviously, um, you know, cars are door-to-door, which is much more convenient. The exception, of course, is journeys into central London, which is where the, the rail market's focused because it's so congested and um, car, car travel is not really an option. But for the rest of the country, generally, the car's much more convenient. Now, we know that the government is committed to HS2 and it says it will manage the cost within budget and secure maximum value for money for the taxpayer. Uh, it's going ahead. Wouldn't it be better to spend time and effort researching what's the best route and making this scheme as good as it can be rather than looking for obstacles? Well, I mean, I don't think it's certain that it's definitely going to go ahead because we've seen a, you know, a big shift um, in the debate recently with a lot of key figures coming out against HS2, uh, Peter Mandelson and, and several former chancellors, for example. So there's still a lot of debate within the, if you like, the Westminster village, and it's not certain it's going to go ahead. But having said that, if it does go ahead, then then yes, um, I mean, can it be done at lower cost and, and to minimise the burden on taxpayers? I very much doubt it because the, there are just so many vested interests that are, you know, have an interest in in making money out of HS2, you know, the contractors and the city councils in places like Birmingham and Manchester are very keen on it. So it would be difficult to change it that much. Do you think the government will listen to you? I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure certain certain, uh, politicians will take note, but... um, yeah, I, doubt, I, doubt, I doubt that uh, people within the DFT will, will take that much notice because obviously they, they're they very committed to the scheme themselves and there are uh, all kinds of uh, positions and so on that are dependent on HS2. So yeah, it's very difficult to challenge some of these entrenched interests, but it, uh, someone has to do it because taxpayers don't really have a voice in this debate.